Hey guys, welcome back to the Animator Guild podcast, where we talk about the creative process, respond to audience questions, and explore big ideas which cannot fit into ordinary YouTube videos. James Dixon is an animator from Australia. He's the winner of the Animator Guild Short Film Contest 2020. He amazed all of the judges with his action-packed short film called Plague. If you haven't seen Plague yet, it will be linked below in the description. It is an amazing story and you will want to see it so that you understand what we're talking about in this conversation. As well as ranking number one in the tournament, his entry was also the category winner for most entertaining film and it was voted best use of animation. With the opening of the new Animator Guild short film contest 2021, I think this is a highly relevant interview. New contest entrants will want to lean in to hear what methods and tactics James used to win last year's contest. All right, let's get into it. Please enjoy my conversation with James Dixon. Welcome, James, to the Animator Guild podcast. Thank you. I want to ask you, actually, what is your background in animation? How did you get into animation? At what age? How did it develop from there? I started animation in year... It, for me, it's year 10. Do you have 13 year years? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's year 10. My art teacher thought that comic making was not an art form. And Ooh. so I tried to... <laughs> <laughs> so originally, I wanted to do uh, comics and be a comic artist. So I studied a lot up on comics and stuff. He would very much like me to do nothing else but charcoal and so whenever i tried to do anything out of the norm of drawing or painting or anything like that like he wanted me to do charcoal really badly but when i showed him that i could uh, do stuff with animation i impressed him and managed to get one of the highest marks in the class i think that's great i so yeah with most people that doesn't happen like with the no with their art teachers they always have horror stories of especially in that high school time before university yeah. before college yeah it's usually negative but that's that's really good that you had a teacher who would encourage you to do that but yeah that's sort of where it started um i started doing like little bits of animation here and there no more like really janky stick figure fights i wanted to ask you about that from what i can see on your youtube channel you kind of went oh, zero gosh. to a hundred <laughs> <laughs> with like <laughs> with uh the plague short film is like such a polished piece of work and then i was like okay let's look into his uh like his other previous animations and they were a lot more sort of spontaneous in there and sort of <laughs> at times it feel like a bit of a troll like not uh i'm not sure yeah. if troll's the right word but sort of like no, just goofing i made a bunch of like really janky animations they were partially because i was sort of ex exploring like what I could do with animation but yeah a lot of the stuff on my YouTube channel maybe except besides Plague is pretty bad. I do have like other stuff that's good and I am planning to like put <laughs> stuff on there that's actually up to the standard of Plague but yeah. I was wondering I about think... that if you were hiding things. <laughs> but yeah I originally had this channel as like a joke channel and oh my cringy brony stages i was planning on doing like a bunch of my little pony stuff and i'm like uh i hate looking back on that but yeah <laughs> yeah you can see the different stages of evolution almost from from just looking at the channel it's like you go through a brony stage and you've also got a lot of stickmen uh stick stick figure yeah. animations on there rhg yeah. and things like that is that something you're still involved with not really so like i made a few animations but they're not really going anywhere like i feel like most rhgs are like that now but like okay, like yeah. people are like oh yeah i want to fight you and then they call them, and then like we start planning all this stuff and then no one gets to it <laughs> how does it work exactly rhg i i've never been i've never done it uh, okay but yeah originally it's sort of like you create a character on this forum if people like it they will PM you and say, hey, do you want to fight? And then you'd set like a, a month to create the fight because it's with stick figures. But like, honestly, I was like super procrastinating. I worked on nothing else to just work on it. Cause like, oh, it's my first fight. I'm going to make it look so cool. And then the other guy never submitted anything. Oh, no. <laughs> so I won by default. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bad. Well, do you have any 
advice for people who are transitioning or, or aiming to transition from stick figure animations to full body because you're someone who can do both who's uh who's done stick figure animations and full body i was definitely starting to try and do a lot of full body stuff but using like puppets in adobe animate right but yeah starting to like draw actual people and then like learning to be able to create poses like i feel like stick figure animation is very limited but you can make some really cool looking stuff in it. I think once you find that point where your stick figure animations are starting to look and feel more lifelike, you can start translating that to an actual person. And then once you start drawing like actual people and once you start learning where the arms go, the location of like where they are on a chest and like in relation to everything else, then you can start figuring out like, oh, this is how a person might hold this pose. And then you start drawing a person and that would kind of make sense. Right. So it's actually building out from the stick figure pose or your knowledge of the stick figure. Yeah, sort of. It sort of started off just by like, yeah, just sort of like trying to draw a stick figure and then sort of like put a, try and translate that onto uh, my character or whatever. Yeah. But I think eventually, like up and like until now, I can't remember how to draw stick figures <laughs> <laughs> so it's gone the opposite like way. it's gone yeah it's gone like i can only draw full body poses now i really like i tried to like get my friends to like oh let's 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 try creating a stick figure fight together and they're like okay and then we started and i've like I, I think i've completely forgotten how to draw a stick figure like i can't remember the rules i put into making a stick figure fight and like i have like five stick figure animations that are like unreleased and unfinished and i just can't find any motivation to go back and work on them because they're like how do i do this i can't remember but yeah it's a shame because one of them was uh i think you like the very first video on my channel i think it's a stick figure fight called overpowered okay yeah and i think there are people waiting for like a sec like i know a lot of younger kids in my old school are like oh where's the second part to this animation and i'm like yeah it's in the works <laughs> <laughs> waiting a long time yeah it's about three minutes long now but i have like no intention to go back to it anytime soon i i, yeah. I have a sort of point that i reach where i let go of certain animations in the past you just got to think yeah. is it worth is it worth putting in loads of time to relearn how to make it as well? Because you've got to open yeah, up those exactly. old files and get a bearing is where things are. It takes yeah. a long time and you could yeah. spend that time making new animations. Yeah, exactly. Like getting into the flow of the old project is a bit hard. It Sometimes really I look back on my flash files and like, I think there was one I was going to make about a card game and I had made these incredibly like high quality models, not models, puppets. And then I went back into it and there was like 50 layers and I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna use this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very hard to open up a new file like that. I mean, an old file. Yeah, an old file, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, I've got a question here from Evan Stout, AKA Stavan, and he's talking about Plague, your film. Yeah. So he says, from the beginning of the animation, I was struck with a very charismatic world full of mystery and what seems to have an unpleasant history. Throughout the animation, there seem to be hints of world building surrounding the main character, supporting the possible existence of more in-depth story in the world which she lives in, for example, the dystopian society, the ongoing battles with monsters, the several mounted on the wall, etc is there more to this world that you have thought of that we as viewers may not know of so i think he's asking is there more to this are you planning on building it out so i plan to leave plague where it is i'm not planning to go back to it anytime soon i feel like this was a project that i used a to one just discover just to sort of discover what what i can do with animation like i feel like plague was me trying to find a good way i can incorporate my animation skills into a shorter story because i think up until that point i had never really tried to animate anything like serious i am very much a comedic animator i love going over expression but this time i tried to try and make something a little more serious yeah and to try and see what I can do to push my animation boundaries to do that. So I think the hardest one, hardest shot I tried to do was the rotating 360 shot. What I what I can do to sort of like push my 2D 
boundaries. Yeah, bit off topic uh, from the main uh, question. No, that's interesting. Oh, that's I, I want to like pursue that because yeah, some of those okay, shots sure. that you had in there were really quite ambitious. There's even one yeah. where it starts kind of upside down, and then it, and then I think that is the shot you're talking about. Yeah, that's the rotating one. Yeah. Yeah. So for that, did you use any kind of 3D stage? Was it just clever tweening in Flash? <laughs> uh, that was mostly just clever tweening. Yeah. I really wanted to use a 3D program to like, just so I could have like a more solid fluid motion. I feel mm. like if I was to ever go back to Plague, it would be in like 10 years and I would remake the entire animation, but with like, pr with proper like 3D software and stuff to actually oh, wow. like help convey the world that's the only way i can see i don't really want to do a sequel to it i or or a prequel to be honest like i like it how it is i like i like that uh it has enough information to set you off and to thinking what you think happens next yeah exactly it kind of the rest of the story in my mind is, is told in my own imagination like you yeah. set enough of the I world like. to for me to then explore it in my mind so i don't think you, it mm. needs more coverage really like, yeah, I think job. <laughs> a prequel would be more realistic, but I don't really want to jump into it. Like, I'm not really jumping up at the idea of Plague again. Yeah. Well, uh, I, going I got back a lot to the question a little bit, another way of looking at it is not, maybe not so much, will there be a, a sequel or a prequel, but how much did you think about the, the world building and the characters that didn't go into the animation itself? Like, do you okay. have names for the characters? Things like that. All right. So the main character, or the main in quotation marks, because there's technically two. So there's two characters that did have names, but I didn't really mention them. So Maria is the female, and Doctor Fresia is the the main plague doctor that fights off the big rat at the end. All right. Uh, yeah, they were married, and they had two children. Ah. That was originally cut from the script, though. <laughs> wow. Like there was supposed to be a scene where. Like it's after the plague and Maria's leaving her children behind, and then like they've got like this glint of like mom don't leave in their eyes. But I felt like that's a bit much. Yeah, I can cut this. I don't need it. <laughs> and you decided to stick with the action. <laughs> yeah. Originally, it was going to. It was not a sort of a flashback scene. So originally, plague was going to be like three times longer than it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was originally going to be like, oh, there's like this flashback and they're dying. And then it was actually supposed to go into the next battle. And like the main focus was the next battle. And then Maria was supposed to die in quotation marks and have the shadow of Dr. Frasia uh, creeping up on her. Right. And that's where it would have ended. But yeah, I felt that was a bit too much, a too much to animate. There was two big fight scenes rather than I could just have one big fight scene. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is just too much of a thrill ride. So how can I condense this? So I was thinking, why not have everything go back into the that uh, same idea? And I can keep all the shots I have. I just have to throw them all around to like create something that actually flows a bit better, looks a bit nicer and doesn't jump from one extreme to the next extreme too quickly all right like, just one thing that yeah flows a bit nicer. yeah so so it originally was was very long yeah i think from the very first moment like everyone i think we had to like present our storyboards to the class everyone had maybe like uh i think the most out of everyone was like 12 pages long uh each page consisting of around six panels and i came to class with 30. oh wow <laughs> this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens and my teacher was like are you sure you can do this and i'm like no <laughs> that's a yeah it's because yeah. i i think i've i've heard a lot of pictures from people you know people who are telling me their ideas and that's yeah. been a very common thing that i've found is that people they write too much and they and yeah. a lot of the writing process is actually thinking like actually i've got two characters here i'm just gonna merge them into one character because why have two yeah, i've yeah, got to yeah. animate two people instead of one mm. it's like you want to do things like that you you said you uh merge two battles into one battle and things like that like good advice would be don't be afraid to throw away parts of your story or your storyboard there's mm. always something better that can come out of the frame so for example the first battle was only supposed to be uh dr frasia's fight and the second fight was supposed to be all of maria's fighting uh. and it was originally maria who was supposed to take down the big rat but yeah i just repurposed all of those frames for the one fight 
and it worked perfectly fine. That's great. Did, did I notice correctly that you did your own music and sound as well? Yeah, so for some of the sound effects, they were just like free. I did the music. I, I had an original composition for basically the submission date, but I worked on the music sort of after the submission date as well. And I touched up on a few things like after the submission. Yeah. So yeah, like on, on submission, I managed to finish the entire thing, but it looked a little ugly in some places. So for the next like month, I just quickly just touched up on anything I needed to. And also around that time, uh, I lived by myself, but uh, yeah, my dad came over and because he was a music composer, I asked him if he could make a just tune and I like showed him the animation. And then basically what, what I did to make my la like, like the first track I had was just me hitting the keyboard and <laughs> trying to make something sound nice, but it didn't sound nice at all. Like I, I had to like, I had like, oh, like this, this synth sound sounds nice. I'm gonna put that in. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, I asked him if he could make something just a little more somber and something that fit the mood, and yeah, he did. So that was good. And I just quickly touched up everything, and because he he didn't really know how to use the program I gave him, but yeah, he managed to make a song in it. I just added a few bits here and there, and so yeah, he did the, but all the battle music and stuff I did myself. Wow. Yeah, yeah, because I was talking with Hyun about it, you know, the other judge, and mm. we were just saying how like, it has that sensibility of an actual music composer, like someone who does it for a living. So now I know why. You got a bit of help yeah. with it. Got a little bit of help from my dad. But yeah. yeah, I did grow up with a music background, slightly. I, I love the drums. I was taught piano. I know the basic fundamentals of, like, music theory, and sound and I feel like that translates very well into animation and yeah. especially as a solo creator like Certainly. it translates very it translates very well like I hate the piano though that's the only thing <laughs> yeah I, I never managed to learn the piano I, I I'm a guitar guy though yeah guitar sounds way more fun <laughs> It's, I, learned, it's kind of... I started learning piano at like age five and like 16 years I've been learning it and I haven't got a single thing out of it. I feel so bad. Oh. Like I hated it so much and now I just regret it. But yeah, I regret not learning it. Yeah. So I, I just Boy. noticed that it's quite a coincidence that Plague came out during the pandemic we currently have. Uh, yes. And I was actually thinking like if there are any animations here that are that have the potential of going viral, I feel like it's this one. Just uh -huh. because of how, yeah, viral pun. But yeah, ha have you received many comments about that? Or has anyone noticed that? Or thought that you predicted it or something? So originally, when, when the video was uploaded to the Hyun Dojo channel, one of the very first comments was a virus meme. And I think that is the top comment on that video. <laughs> and then followed up by another roughly 100 or so comments just about it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like this, this animation was made about a year, like was conceptualized a year before this happened. Uh, yeah, I don't think I predicted anything. I I think it's just like a crazy coincidence that it's gotten the attention during this time. <laughs> yeah. Rather than back when I originally uploaded it, which was like sometime last year. But yeah, yeah, honestly, I hate this virus so much. I don't think I sort of got the emotion of this virus like i wanted to capture the emotion and sort of i got gained inspiration of the bubonic plague of the 1300s mm. yeah like that that yeah. was the main thing it's our minds making the connection you know it's like oh with the visual style you've got things like the masks the plague masks and things which yeah, I feel yeah. are kind of like that steampunk aesthetic but also yeah mm. anything from that victorian era i don't I don't think I predict. Oh, I predicted it. Oh, it's so fine now. This was just a weird coincidence. Yeah. Also, my condolences to anyone who has the virus or knows a, has a family or friend. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so another question for you. The, the film does really well in explaining things visually without needing dialogue. The characters make certain sounds. You know, there's a very haunting crying scream at the end, which I really liked. But for the most part, there's no dialogue and you're able to still communicate everything very well. Is it something you would recommend? I mean, you're, you're talking here with me and <laughs> I do the same thing, you know. But yeah. yeah, do you have any advice for people who might be willing uh, to do that? Yeah, so I guess, firstly, I'm a big fan of Show Don't Tell. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Study body language, I think, would be a lot of things. Like, if you look at someone's emotion, like, just go out on the street and if you see someone who's got like a lot of emotion saying, hmm, what do you think they're thinking? 
Yeah. Or like, I guess it helps to sort of be a drama queen or an actor <laughs> in this case. I know I can be a bit of a drama queen and I know that I am, I overexpress a lot of myself. So I can sort of easily convey that sense of emotion or what I'm trying to convey to my animations. But yeah, I feel like it would be good if you go have a look at like, what, what, what emotion am I trying to convey? And how would I convey that emotion? You want to try and you really want to sell it. So like principle of animation, exaggeration is like a big one, like yeah. over exaggerate and like secondary action as well. So like always have that one thing that sort of sells that emotion. Yeah, I, I feel like when one of the things is just to try it, I think in the storyboard st stage when yeah people, let's say you're used to writing comic books or or animations with dialogue so mm. do that do that whole thing and then for each panel that has dialogue just see okay how do i translate this to be something visual i think the real difficult ones are when the characters are talking about something in the future yeah so the present tends to be all right you know if something's happening then and there you can just show it you can put point the camera there you can do a point of view shot you can express it with emotions but future that's that's to me what is uh, tricky i feel like like there is a lot you can convey with talking and it is a lot easier to lip sync than draw an entire like emotion mm. and a pose but yeah like especially in animation if you're like you need a lot of strong key poses a lot of Mm. Uh, yeah, a lot of things that actually like show that this person is feeling this thing. Like, I think one thing is you want to be able to tell what emotion they're feeling by like just a silhouette. Yeah, a silhouette. So like, yeah, yeah, if you could see someone sitting down with their hands in their their hands on their head, you can probably tell that they're upset or sad or depressed or something like that. Mm. But they they understand from that pose this person is feeling this. Or if they've got their arms up in the air and they're walking with high and like their chest out and their legs are high up in the air, you can tell, oh, this person's happy or jolly. So you want to be able to like show a strong key pose just from a silhouette. Yeah. When, when you said I, I, about the, the head in the hands, I thought about the um, the stock photo that's kind of now a meme. You know, <laughs> yeah. like the, the one with like the typical businessman with the, like, yep. at his yeah. desk with his head in his hands. And it's like a really funny image, but it's actually it actually is very good at just communicating yeah. something very simply. Yeah. Honestly, stock photos are great. Like They're you can look at a well. bunch of stock photos and you don't have to like take them outright you don't have to buy the image but just look at them and use them for reference and it's yeah. great like I, I i do love animations a lot and i i think the ones that stand out to me are the ones that don't use words yeah so what, like, do you have uh, recommendations have for people to go and watch oh yeah if you go and watch the original tom and jerry's those are great oh yeah <laughs> uh other few animations like there was a recent animation that came out that i it's only five episodes long but i love it so much primal uh, oh. by gendy tartakovsky oh yeah yeah Tartakovsky, amazing legend no no words are spoken just grunts and screams and it's gruesome it is gruesome so like if, if you if you have a fear of blood yeah don't watch it but i felt like this is something that i would make it felt so good <laughs> yeah like honestly the i wish i had seen this and i wish i had seen it before plague came out but i think it came out after plague yeah if you go and watch it you can see that there's quite a lot of similarities that i wish i had drawn from that's also done by studio la cachet they did a lot of the animation in it and they're like one of my favorite yeah, studios yeah. perhaps mm. my favorite yeah you got any I others i don't really know what else to the og tom and jerry's are really good oh yeah like go back jump back watch any like tom and jerry and you can see just the pain in tom's eyes you can just see how creative they can get with showing emotion through tom who is a cat who just can't speak like it's a cat yeah. but you can see all the emotion he feels just from his expressions and stuff or you can jump back even further and watch the Charlie Chaplin. Oh yeah, yeah. Watch any Charlie. Yeah. You can see, like, from his. You don't even have to watch expressions. Just his movements can tell you a lot about what he's thinking, what he's feeling. You gotta for those ones. You gotta watch one of the ones that aren't uh, dubbed because I think Cha Chaplin. Yeah, that's true. He actually went back through his films once sound was invented i guess and yeah i didn't even know there was a dubbed version honestly <laughs> yeah it's because i i accidentally bought 
uh, a version of the Gold Rush, which has okay. the dub on it. So uh, it kind of defeats the point of silent film. But, yeah, it does. Yeah, I feel like the silent is like some one of the most like iconic things that you just can't really take away from Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, it's like pure cinema. That's how I feel about yeah. silent films and Chaplin mm. especially. Yeah, those are my recommendations. I don't watch that much stuff, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but th- those are like pretty good recommendations. They're just like, you know, you've narrowed it down very well, which mm. is good. So I'm just going to cut to the question I've really been wanting to ask you, which is what are your future plans in animation? Oh boy. Okay, so I'm currently working on two animations. A one is a personal project and another is a another uni project, but I'm working with a team this time. Okay. So I guess I can spoil a bit. So the one I'm working on is another sort of test to what I can push with animation, but this time I'm really focusing on trying to pull off ridiculous Sakuga animation. Cool. And I'm trying to go all in with the effects. I'm a big fan of Smash Bros. and I'm a big fan of uh, <laughs> Star Fox. Okay. I love Fox and Falco, so I'm actually putting them in a fight and just seeing and using all their equipment and stuff. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the game or anything, but yeah. I, I'm I'm a former gaming addict, so now I treat it like <laughs> like a recovering addict. And I, yeah. I don't go near it, you know. Yeah, so fair I, enough. I don't actually know anything about them. That's fine. <laughs> but to people who are listening yeah. who know that, I'm sure that will make them very excited. Yeah, especially if they are melee connoisseurs or anything like that. Now, yeah, so I'm basically putting them against a f- in a fight. I'm also doing it in the style of Studio Trigger. That's ambitious. Yeah, I know it is. It's crazy. But I'm trying to get that like that style of like way too many sparkles, lots of explosive <laughs> effects, stuff like that. Nice. Because I was like, I think I was watching, yeah, I was watching Kill a Kill, and I'm like, wow, this is weird, but the animation's so cool. <laughs> yeah, Kill a Kill, that's kind that's of like, an I'll... interesting one, because they, they're they kind of mocking themselves with it. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but at the same time, they are that thing yep. that they're mocking. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't take itself I, re- I think I enjoyed the first half a lot more than the second half. Right, yeah. That's I, I mean, of, I, yeah. I can't even remember how much of it I watched. I think I just watched a little bit just to get an idea of what it was all about yeah like it is it is funny but it's like it's very it's a bit unnatural it is a bit unnatural yeah i it's certainly not the kind of style that i would do yeah but it but like it, storytelling I wise the... it's something i wouldn't do but yeah. like animation style i thought okay this looks pretty cool it's very wacky uh, i just like anything like Watching anything that Studio Trigger does is actually pretty cool. Or even um, the movie they released, Promare, was, I thought that was pretty good. What's it called? Uh, Promare. Oh, yeah. I saw the trailer for that. Yeah. I yeah. like the colors in that. It's, yeah, really Yeah, lucky. the colors are amazing. Honestly, when I watched it, in, I watched it in the theater. I watched it by myself, and I was just like this one guy in this theater full of like a bunch of weeaboos, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of funny. I'm, I'm personally not that much of a weeb like I, I like studying anime yeah but i don't like watching it for more of its like story and stuff like if it has a good story I'll, I'll definitely focus and listen on on it but most of the time i look at it for its appeal yeah and style i'd have to say i'm the same with that yeah because <laughs> i know i know there's definitely some really good animes out there like anything by studio ghibli is pretty much bound to be amazing and based on the comments of Hayao Miyazaki, it leads you to question whether it is anime. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was watching Howl's Moving Castle and I'm like, this feels half between an anime and not. Yeah, and the amount of influence they've taken from Disney as well. It's not Japanese, so it doesn't feel like it's in the realm of yeah, Japan um, anymore. So, yeah, I think it's set in Europe. Mm. But I think it was based. that one was based off a book. That was yeah. It was by yeah. Diana Wynne Jones, who's a famous yeah, yeah. fantasy author. Mm. I I I actually looked into that into Howl's Moving Castle, found the author, the original author, and read a couple more of her books. Oh, cool! To to get a flavor of it, and yeah, they they are really. She's a really good fantasy writer. I read this book she she wrote called. It's it's a terrible title. It's too long to remember, but I've remembered it. It's uh, Cart and Quitter, the Dale Mark Quartet, which is difficult to say and everything. But just remember mm. Cart and Quitter, and uh, mm. I I thought that was a really good fantasy novel as well. If you did want to read, 
see if I can find an audio book or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how I read it. It's as an audio book. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, what about like studios? Are you thinking of joining a studio or are you thinking of going freelance once you graduate? I think best course of outcome is I work as a freelance or I start my own company. Okay. I feel like that's a bit far-fetched. I think freelance is a little more in the realm of possibility. But I feel like the course that I'm currently going is I might work for a company for a, for, for a few years and then start branching off and doing my own thing. To get the experience once I, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm currently doing an internship at a uh, game company slash okay. a animation company, but they're mainly focused on creating animation tools for, for younger kids. Okay, yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah, back to uh, what I'm working on. So the next thing is I'm working on a project that I won't reveal the title of, but mainly because we haven't really found one yet, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's working going to yes. be completely opposite of play. It's going to be very comedy focused. It is going to have voice acting, sadly. <laughs> but yeah, I'm working in a team of four, so there's three other animators that I have to keep a track of. Uh, I am working as sort of the director of the group. Yeah, I think especially now it's really hard to keep a track of them just because we can't actually meet up in person. I think I'm also, I am that person who like wants to take control of everything just because I want everything <laughs> to look the way I see it, I can which I know is a really that. bad idea, but like, yeah, but it's like, I see, but like, I feel like sometimes I can watch someone's animation like, oh yeah, I, I would change a few things. Yeah. So is that a second year project for you? This is a second slash third year okay. project. I think your syllabus so. is structured similar to what mine was when I went to university because mm. I did a second year project, which was a group project. Mm. And yeah, it, it's just sounding remarkably similar. When you saying that like, you struggle to uh, to not control everything and yeah. that you're directing exactly the same here <laughs> with me. You know, I was director and some of the scenes I, I was like... Very good. Can you just leave that scene with me for one minute? <laughs> and I'll just, yeah. <laughs> I would just go and like go in there and change a bunch of things. Yeah. I think the one thing is that I do know that the animators I'm working with are all proper like students. They're not there because I know there's a few students who like just come in for the for the degree and oh, then yeah. leave, but they don't. They're not really interested. So I do know that everyone in our like I think there's one animator who's not a specialist in 2D, but she's pretty good. Well, yeah, the two others are, like, really good animators. So, yeah, I feel like we can do something pretty cool. I think the one thing that I'm most concerned about is, like, the mix of styles. Because I feel like everyone in our group does something different. <laughs> mm. And we're really akin to that one thing. I think for any other animators out there, don't be afraid to branch out into a different... Like, don't focus everything into sort of one skill you can do. Like, even though it's pretty good, like, have one skill you're really good at, but don't be afraid to have all those other skills like for example i can do very good what you call those furries if you would <laughs> okay yeah i can do very good furry characters but i suck at life drawing i can draw faces decently and i've been trying to study up on how to draw like proper like nicer cartoon faces because that's my area of like not being very good okay that's what and, you yeah. want to improve on yeah so i definitely want to improve on human like human faces, hair especially, I struggle with hair a lot. Do you, do you feel like without that, you might not have your films be taken seriously? No, it's more that I feel like I won't be able to be broad enough. I managed to study up on like how to draw like nice cartoon faces. And for this project, we are using children. That's the main cast. They're all kids. I practiced basically drawing as cartoony as possible, like not, but like, going to that American standard cartoon thing, cartoon code, if you know what I'm talking about. I think so. Yeah, basically they've got like this, I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like an American standard animation style. And then like everyone, like all the Cartoon Network shows are doing it now, so I'm like, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it uh... like they've all got this? They've all got pretty much the exact same like face shape, I guess you could say. Is this an actual More of, like... thing or is it just a sort of unspoken? I think it is, it's called it, it's called, I think it's based off like one shape of the face where it's sort of like a pill shape, but there's this one blip where the mouth is and pretty much all modern cartoon characters have that. It's, it's kind of like anime, but for American television. If there is an actual standard out there that all kids TV shows follow, that is the most uncreative thing yeah, exactly. ever. 
Yeah. Like, I think I was looking at something and they were like, they put all these cartoon characters that are up to date now. Like, I don't yeah. really follow that many cartoons, but I think the latest one I watched was like Gravity Falls or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, they were like, have had this picture of like these four characters and they're all from like recent cartoons and they all have the exact same face shape. Oh, man. I really hope that's not yeah. a thing. Yeah. But, but it sounds like it is a thing. But like, that's why I like drawing animals because they're like, you can vary it as much as you like. Yeah, there's a lot more variation. I can see. I see what yeah. you mean. That's why I love like Zootopia and stuff like that. And like, I do like furry characters. I don't like the community that much. I'm not a right. huge fan of the community, but like, I love anthropomorphic characters. I guess you could say. Yeah, there's a kind of stigma around it. I've I've been mostly separate to it. I've never really had that that many encounters with with the yeah. community but there is i i know yeah, there is fine. a sort of they have a reputation of some sort yeah it's not good <laughs> yeah i i honestly hate some furries so much like i have like i think i started uploading my work to deviant art and then there were like some creepy dudes trying to get me to like they were like oh can you draw this char- character from <laughs> oh, this no. angle and i'm like no thank you <laughs> bye bye and that's why i left <laughs> yeah but i know what you mean about animals there, there is a lot more variation and is yeah, also like, like the characters and the personalities you can portray from an animal character yeah, yeah, is what yeah. I want. And that's why like a lot of Disney characters like I think Robin Hood, you can get a yeah. lot of like styles from that. I love the design think, of the, the Robin yeah. Hood animation. Yeah. That was actually uh, one of my ideas was like to reanimate a scene from Robin Hood, but more take do a more modern take on it. So I don't I don't know if I'm gonna follow up with the, this idea or not, but I was gonna take the the shooting scene. Oh, I love the shooting scene. Yeah, and I was going to reanimate it, except in a more futuristic tone. So instead of having bows, they have like sniper rifles and targets like <laughs> eons off, and they have to make these like precise sniper rifle shots. That's pretty creative. That's a good idea. I just wouldn't do it just out of honoring Milt Carl. You know, I just feel like oh, yeah, exactly. I can't I can't mess with that. <laughs> it's yeah, literally like, sacred it's still, it's, animation. It's such a perfect scene. Of why would I want to reanimate it? But I'm like, yeah, but it, it, it'd be cool though. You know? Yeah. No, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of Milk Carl is like the Jesus of animators. Yeah, exactly. The chosen one. Yeah, you don't want to mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, animal characters are great. Just don't destroy their just don't destroy their image. Yeah, yeah. I I guess do you think that the people who do create lewd images, they kind of ruin the reputation for everyone? They kind of create a bad like in in to be honest, it's just fan art. But to a lot of people, it can ruin like it can ruin a lot of like what people think. Like I don't I don't feel like it's I don't want to get involved with fandoms. I've seen some stuff that like it was not bad. I guess like some really talented artists can create lewd stuff. I don't look at it too much, but it pops up here and there sometimes. Especially when I'm looking up references for stuff, there's mm. always like one or two images on Google search that come up. They can be really creative, but I feel like it does ruin a lot of what that character like means to a lot of people. Mm. I think especially for me, like I see a character as how they are in a piece of media and I want them to sort of stay like that. But once you get this image implanted of your hand of something else, you start to think of that character a bit differently, I guess. I see. Yeah. Well, the idea that you had of recreating that uh, Robin Hood scene, uh, something like that, which is would be pretty cool to see. I guess that's like scoring points in the other direction and being like, look, you can do furry characters and ha- give and make them dignified and entertaining and all the things that you want. Yeah. But like, again, I don't want to mess too much with the uh, <laughs> yeah. classic animation. Yeah. True. yeah. It could go onto a different path of like, we have a shoot off instead. And it's like, you've got these characters that are going for a shoot off. One of them's hiding something from the other and like, take that idea of that scene, but like change it into a different story. Well, exactly. Like the way you described it, I felt was transforming it in a sufficient way so that it becomes its own scene. Yeah. yeah. Hang on a minute. Oh my gosh, every morning there's like, they mow the same patch of grass and I have no idea why. <laughs> they got nothing else to do during this <laughs> they got time. Else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's the same, he's been gardening like, I don't know, every day of the week, you know, because it's just something to do. Yep. <laughs> Uh, poor guys i don't have that problem you know people are talking about yeah, adjusting no. to to life under quarantine and it yeah. is absolutely business as usual for me mm-hmm. yeah honestly i'm pretty much the same i think the only problem is i like that one or two days that i do go to uni just so i can get a little bit of like 
just out there-ness. Yeah, interaction. Like, even though I'm, I'm very introverted, like I definitely don't like communicating with people, but I like seeing a few of my friends each day just to like catch up and stuff, just to give me that little bit of motivation. Mm. But I feel like being caught up, like just being in a room all day can really like make me feel, I think, extremely lazy. Yeah, I, I don't I get, get cabin that. fever. Yeah, like I, I don't get that like sense of like, oh, I should go out and like, I want to go out and like, sometimes I'll occasionally like, okay, I want to go work out in the cafe. I got, I want to go like work on this animation in a cafe because at least I'll be out, I'll be forced to work and I can be motivated the entire time. Yeah. Do you have a you mobile that. tablet or something that you can use for it? I, originally, I was just working on a laptop. I recently got a Surface Pro for my birthday, but I haven't used it properly. Yeah. Like I wanted a mobile studio, but they're they're super expensive. So I'm like, yeah, maybe later. I'll I've... settle for I'll settle for a Surface Pro. Yeah, a Surface Pro is like are pretty nice from what I can see. I'm very. It's okay. Cool. Like it's it's not bad. It works fine with Photoshop. Um, with Animate, it's a little bit laggy and it's a bit hard to get used to. Yeah. But like I feel like it's pos. It is definitely possible to do stuff on it because I know my friend is purely like she does all her work on a Surface pro and yeah she does all of her work on that and so it is possible and, and and she she's pretty good as well so like it's definitely possible to work on a surface pro but like compared to what i usually work on with is which is a um a cintiq 16 mm. yeah there's it's pretty it's pretty hard to go back a step yeah, yeah. most of my work was usually done on an intuos though like out, outside work's usually done on an intuos okay well i've got a cintiq companion too but i don't use it oh, so hardly as much as i should because it's it's kind of anxious taking it out of the house to a to a cafe or something. Yeah, that is. Weird. So I actually don't use it as much as I should. It, it's it's a bit of a <laughs> stressful thing if you take it to the cafe and then you want to go to the bathroom but you can't leave it there and you've got to ask a stranger, "Hey, can you look for? You can you look after this?" Yeah. And yeah, I haven't actually figured out that the whole bathroom problem of of doing cafe animation i i have two ways to do it so first is have a friend come over with me mm. or i usually ask the waitress to say hey can you look after this like that that takes up a lot of courage for me to do but i'm like hey could you like look after this especially if i i bought like a really small thing from their shop <laughs> yeah. and i'm just been sitting in there for like five hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> they already don't really like you from, from yeah that. exactly yeah it's not the problem and I'm not the only one with the problem. There's a there's another YouTuber who's a, an artist who I'm subscribed to, and she was talking about the same exact thing. And like the friends <laughs> thing does work if you <laughs> if you have friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Especially also friends who are doing the same thing as you as well. <laughs> yeah, they have to be also in the same line of work and stuff yeah. like that. So it continues to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, no. I've managed to go to a few cafes and they weren't too bad. Like I feel like like during the production of Playboy I went to a cafe at least four, three or four oh probably more actually probably more, like maybe seven times I went to a cafe and just worked on my laptop and Intuos. Well that's pretty good. Yeah. I think most of the times I did have a friend to go with, but I think one or two times there was like I was by myself and I was there for like maybe eight hours. Yeah. Wow. I think I think an, another side of me is like thinking like oh they're getting business you know because <laughs> well, I felt like like I was there for the, like they only had like six or seven customers and I was there for the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long time to spend in there. Yeah, hour as well. But it was uh, comfy though. <laughs> I, I think that the idea of animating in a cafe is really appealing. I yeah. had dreams of. Before I had the Cintiq Companion, you know, I would dream of being able to animate on the go, you know, like, oh, just chuck it in your mm. rucksack, take it anywhere, take it, yeah, you know, animate on the train, animate in the cafe. And I do still try and do that, but the reality of it is a little bit more uncomfortable than yeah that's than what you'd imagine. But yeah, I feel like if you are a traveler, like, it is good to have that, but I feel like because... Most of us just want to be home and we're not leaving too much, then I feel like, yeah, there's not much reason to go out. Like for me, it's sort of just like a burst of energy. Yeah. I'm still wondering if the nomadic lifestyle is possible for an animator because I don't know any animators who actually, they are actual nomads. Like they will travel yeah. full time. I, I don't know. 
like honestly not having like a place to call your own and just moving from place to place while animating i feel like that's just too much i feel like it's doable you don't have but like it's that not... i think you... yeah yeah i feel like you need that one setup that you can always just go back to and that's the thing yeah that's the most productive thing actually it's not the most glamorous yeah. but it, it's actually the thing that works the best yeah you need you need that like one setup that you can always go back to and know you can do stuff on it yeah oh man especially in compositing and things that actually oh, right. use up yeah, a exactly. lot of ram yeah doing that on any yeah. kind of portable thing it oh that that gets frustrating yeah yeah, yeah it is it's awful yeah like, i just love the desktop pc for that my, yeah i didn't have a desktop until just about half a year ago so i got this i got a proper pc just after plague was finished so yeah i originally worked on a laptop that was a it was a decent laptop actually it's it was a, labeled as a gaming pc and so i got it when i was about 16. so it like it was pretty good it, it carried me through the entire thing with almost no lag the longest part was converting it from premiere it just took days <laughs> and uh with the animation files you know a lot of people who with, with the with the flash animation files it's like the people who are saying oh my god flash crashes all the time you find out that they have been putting everything like way too many layers and things in one animation yeah. file you got to split them up i yeah i don't worry i am the same i like even if i'm just working with three layers flash crashes really <laughs> well yeah like i feel like flash just crashes for completely different ran random reasons each time like i think it was even funny because i was watching one of your older videos and i remember this one thing where it was like your flash crashed and i'm like haha i have that problem too <laughs> And like you're just beginning to animate as well. Oh, I, I don't remember that. <laughs> Did I leave it in the video? <laughs> yeah, you left it in the video. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have the same problem I do, where the screen where you draw and then it doesn't oh, work. Oh, and then what you try little and... patches of the screen go black? black. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the exact same problem. Yeah, it's a problem with like the graphics card apparently or something. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm glad I don't have yeah. that now. Yeah, but like, I haven't had. I had that problem maybe about a few weeks ago. Like honestly, Adobe like because I've had the I've bought the Creative Suite. Like it updates every so often, and like the crashes are mostly fixed. I just hate how they just keep changing the layout. Well, you know, join but, me yeah. on TV Paint. It's, it's great <laughs> over here. The TV I want, Paint yeah, is actually I'm, I'm a lot more stable. Trying, I'm gonna start trying trying TV Paint now because I was always interested in it. But yeah, it's was like it's eh, good. too much buttons. <laughs> oh no, it's all right. It's just just the timeline really that's the big thing uh, i think yeah. well that was for, for me it was the timeline the brush is oh, amazing in tv yeah paint. I, I, I think that's the thing that the main thing that drew me to tv paint is the brushes oh it's so it's good. My, i can use my i can use photoshop brushes in this <laughs> what uh well you can't import photoshop brushes well, no but like 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 same texture that kind of style like, though yeah because yeah, it's yeah, bitmap style. yeah and it's actually remarkably stable for for a bitmap software well, actually, I don't know if bitmap softwares are typically more or less stable, but it's it's been really good, I think. It's been mm. really robust. It hasn't crashed on me at all, I don't think. Yeah. Maybe once when I was abusing it, you know, loading too many in image sequences or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the other thing with uh, anime. Like, it doesn't eat as much RAM as I want it to. Well, you want it like, to it, use more it, RAM. I want it, yeah. I'm not sure if there's a way to do it, but I've looked up everyone. I just can't find anything... So like I have a lot of RAM, like I have sixteen right. gigs, but I just, it's not it, making like most anime of it. won't eat more than one. Oh really? Oh, that's no. Good. Yeah, so like I will try and animate like this big scene, and like it shouldn't, it shouldn't crash, it shouldn't have any frame rate drops, but it does. It just like I usually work in thirty FPS, and it will drop to like twelve, and it'll just fluctuate between like it'll, it'll fluctuate between like fifteen to thirty frames, and it won't have that stable thirty FPS. And I'm like, why are you doing this? And I look it up and it's like, it's it's chugging hard, but it's only using one gig of RAM for some reason. I know you can allocate more RAM for After Effects and Premiere. Yeah, I've seen After Effects and Premiere and I have done that and they work fine. It's just Animate for some reason doesn't mm. want to eat more RAM. Yeah, well, you know, Flash has always been the adopted child of Adobe. Yeah. Um, they've never treated it with the same love as uh, their other software, I feel, mm. just with the budget and everything that they probably yeah. give it i feel like it could be really great they just need like that one or two things that people have been asking for for years 
I don't know. I Where, feel like, like it, it's it's had its time, and now there have been the softwares have been made which have literally looked at Flash and be like, we can do this so much better. Like Toon Boom yeah. was exactly that. They they almost yeah. certainly started as like well, actually, they kind of reinvented a lot of the tools to be. Yeah, they did. I, I, you know I've what I mean. I've had a fair bit of time. I had a, I've had a fair bit of time in Toon Boom. Yeah, like I can definitely see where the flash like inspired parts comes from and how they've actually made it a lot better yeah but i feel like there's just a few things that i've taught myself in animate that i just can't reteach myself yeah toon boom well toon boom this is why i say it's not really using the structure of flash it, it's actually it actually operates yeah. very differently and i couldn't get mm. used to it i i well i could have if i stuck out stuck it out longer but i didn't want to <laughs> yeah <laughs> also just i think i just feel like tv paint is like for a traditional artist and someone who wants to like get that nice feeling of hand drawn animation, I feel like TV paint's the best way to express for sure. that. For sure. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like one if you do something in Flash, you like some someone will definitely go like, Oh, that was made in Flash. Yeah. I yeah. can tell that, that <laughs> it, line. You can you can't tell. Mind you, I yeah. liked what you did with uh, with Plague with the the thick black lines. And it's sort of rough yeah. black, like the fl- uh, you could see that it was flash lines, but that but it worked. You know, the design of those lines mm. was actually it worked for that kind of gritty setting. Yeah. So it worked there. It, that was. Yeah, that was it worked good. there. It worked pretty well actually. So what I did is I didn't use the standard flash brush. I actually tweaked it a bit because they added a new function where you could make your own brush, but then like oh, yeah. big quotation marks. <laughs> yeah. So what I did is I just yeah. got like a square brush and I flattened it and turned it on its side. And so it became more of like a flat marker. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so that's what I used to draw most of the scenes. That's how I got like some of the really bold lines. And so it felt more like hand painted in some kind of way. And it just felt a little more gritty. And yeah, I am generally pretty heavy handed as well. So it wasn't too hard for me to do. Yeah. Well, it was, well, I I just got to say again, it was really, really well done. I I really enjoyed playing. I I just, I was so entertained by it as well. You know, the ups and downs and the aesthetic Mm. of it. And for some of them, I learned to appreciate it. Like some of the entries, I was like, you know, first time round, I was like, what is this? I I don't know about this. (laughs) And then like, after three or four or five attempts, I was like, I, I get it now. This is, I, I'm feeling this now. I, this is good. But with yours, it's like first shot, boom. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm watching something good here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, nice one. No, some of the other entries I actually thought were a lot of fun, and some I actually really liked. Like I felt like the, I forgot what they're all called, but no, the one with the diamond things and like the. the the girl with the parachute in the head the i think planet wanderer of the planet parallelogram yeah that one i thought that was really good yeah i enjoyed that one that that, that looked pretty nice the other one which was uh, what was it the goodbye one thank, thank you goodbye thank you, goodbye yeah like, i thought that one told a really nice story the animation was a little bit limited but yeah it was also quite long so i i was, yeah i thought I that's you know that was kind of intentional. That's how she mm. was able to to handle making a film of that length. But yeah, I yeah. agree. And that one actually came very close second. So I, yeah, was... I felt like that one was really well done. I think yeah. I, I noticed a lot of it was done in After Effects as well, which mm. I just can't yeah. figure out how to use that well. <laughs> After Effects is tricky. Yeah, it's a tricky one. I I've I learned After Effects very slowly, and I started by just doing very simple things on it. Yeah, I I think there was a course in our uni that actually went over After Effects, but it taught us how to do like puppet animation in After Effects, which is not really what I want. I wanted to know how to like like I think video editing or like creating special effects would have mm-hmm. been more helpful because at least I can like translate like some special effects or just like how to make small glows and stuff. Like yeah. how, how do I get a lens flare? Those are like the questions I want to like ask. Well, yeah, After Effects is a bit like Photoshop. You know, Photoshop is technically, Photoshop is a photo manipulation software. Like that's its primary mm. thing, but it can yeah. be used for concept art. It can be used for print. It can be used for illustration you know Mm. it can be used for a bunch of things and that's a bit like after effects after effects is a compositing software technically but it can be used for animation motion graphics 
editing, color correction, color grading, so loads of things. Yeah. But those things you yeah. said, they're pretty easy things. A lot of them are actually drag and drop stuff. You, they've got you, this effects bar and it's got this lovely yeah, I think little I search out, bar. Like, it's a great. Bit pieces of how to do stuff but like yeah i think i think i still want to learn like just the basics of like how do i do this yeah luckily like, there's, there's a bit tutorials yeah, on a bit, youtube yeah. that make it easy yeah i think another problem i have i don't know if you've got this ah uh, you probably don't have this but it's like i don't always know how to use my camera your do you mean like, it's a, like the camera in after no, effects like, or that, that was bad like okay so i want i want to do a scene and i want the camera to move all over the place usually how i would do it is i would uh, draw the scene out and then use the use the the camera and animate to do all those camera movements okay. but i think i want to try and not use that animate camera just because i have so many problems with it right i i like I, is that like a, a v cam kind of thing Okay, it started off like I felt like VCams w when you imported a VCam that was good, but because I've got I think in the later versions of Adobe they sorry in the later versions of Animate they they've removed a lot of they removed I think you know this but they removed uh, Action Script two right yeah yeah and yeah they're so only supporting Action Script three and you can import a Action Script three VCam but they've also got this inbuilt camera. I thought so. And there's a lot of good things about it, but there's also a lot of things bad about it. Like one of the good things that I really like is it has depth perception and you can actually like control your layers to see like how far in the background it is. That's so you cool. can get that nice like 3D effect. So I like that. I like that a lot. But there's other things like just the way you move the camera that I don't like. It it works like it it what it does is when it with a VCam you would like move just the camera itself so you could like see what you wanted with this you move the entire stage yeah and like, i don't like that too much also rotating it is a bit of a pain like mm. like the rotate is almost like a completely separate tool so if you want to like you can't just like click and rotate the camera you have to like go into this thing and you can't even like rotate it properly you have to rotate it on a slider see okay my thing is that i don't ever use v camps yeah so i i'm trying I navigate to navigate by just yeah. moving things i'll hmm. put them into a well in after effects i'll put them into a composition and then i'll move the composition around yeah that's how i do that's what that. i want to start doing i just like that i like the control it's a little bit mm. i think people find it hard because instead of moving the camera around where it's like you move it left and it goes left instead it's like it's more like steering the rudder of a boat you know where you move it right and yeah. it goes left you move it left and it goes right <clears throat> yeah which can be tough to to pick up but i don't know i i just i actually like that a lot i feel like then you're more conscious of the of where you're moving things and you design yeah. the movement you design the camera movement better you have to plan the camera movement yeah yeah i wish i could like think like that like i'm trying to sort of teach myself like how do i like when i look at this like when i'm animating the scene i always try and think like okay where do i want the camera and i feel like okay i i want it to move here and i want this effect on this camera but yeah i always try and like I, I always try and like think of where the camera is but i just don't know how to like put it i just don't know how to put it to use in like anime oh sorry like how to put it to use after i finished it i guess you could say Mm. I feel like sometimes it's easier to just redraw the stage for like what I want it to do, oh, like yeah. how how they did in the old days without a VCam. Yeah, I mean that that is a long way of doing it, but you can get yeah. proper depth from doing that. Yeah, exactly. and all sorts of other cool effects like motion blurs and things. So yeah, yeah, it is very time consuming. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I think uh, that's I think that's given us plenty of material to use for this podcast yep <laughs> and yeah thank i thanks for spending so much time you know giving this cool information and giving us an idea of who's behind plague animation <laughs> yeah anything else you want to say before we uh, start yeah. recording uh yeah thank you so much for like having me on and stuff yeah i look forward to showing off my stuff soon I feel like I can start posting to the Animators Guild thing. Not entirely sure how Discord works yet. I would love to but see yeah. you on the Discord group. Uh, but yeah, I'd really cool be happy there. to share a few things that I'm working on. Please, like, I feel yeah. like I'm a bit busy now and a lot of the stuff I'm working is a uh, non-disclosure. But yeah, if I'm working on anything like by myself, then I'm happy to share. Yeah, I'll post it. Let's Great. see what we can get. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you. But yeah, thank you so much for like this opportunity and stuff. 
I hope you enjoyed that interview. I will leave the links to James Dixon's channel and film in the description. I highly recommend that you check it out. Thank you very much to my supporters on Patreon who help to make these videos possible, especially Jesse Labrie, Victor Helt and Sonia. If you are interested in supporting the creation of this podcast and the other videos on this channel, the link to my Patreon page will also be in the description. Subscribe for more and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.